Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video we are going to be playing with some new products from Gina K Designs including the new June 2020 kit called Nature's Touch and I'm going to show you how to create some really easy backgrounds using Tombow markers. First, I want to take a look at the new card kit. This is called Nature's Touch from Gina K Designs, and it is jam-packed with amazing products. You are getting two 6x8 stamps, one 4x6, one stencil, eight sheets of cardstock, including Coral Reef, Lucky Clover, Sea Glass, and Tranquil Teal, and also a set of coordinating dies. So there is a lot jam-packed into this card kit. I'm going to start by creating my backgrounds. I'm going to be using some of the Tombow markers. I have one of Gina's large comfort blocks here, and I also have a piece of watercolor cardstock. This is actually B watercolor cardstock, and then a distress sprayer. So the first thing I'm doing is taking some of my markers and I'm just coloring them onto this acrylic block. It's okay if one goes into the other. They're water-based, the tips clean off really easy, and I'm going to do these in rainbow order, just adding small little strips of color. So this is one way of doing ink smushing. I chose to use Tombow markers because I wanted them to be water reactive in case I wanted to do any other techniques with this and it's really quick and simple to do. I also experimented with uh, different kinds of cardstock that I'll share with you throughout the video. So once all of the colors are down, I'm going to spritz that with some water. Now if you add too much water, it's going to run into each other. The colors will run. So it's a lot of experimenting what works and what look you're gonna go for. Then I'm going to flip that block over, push that down, and let that sit for a few minutes. Once that's done, I'm going to pick the block up and just wipe that away with a paper towel. And you can see the color did not spread very well. It kind of stayed splotchy, which I totally like this look. So this is one way to do it. If you wanted it to spread more, you could add a little bit more water. Now another way to create a background, which I've done in the past videos, is just applying your markers directly to the cardstock. This time I'm actually using some Fabriano cold press watercolor cardstock. That's kind of one of my favorites when it comes to techniques and any watercolor backgrounds. And I chose to just use three of the colors of the rainbow, the pink, the orange, and the yellow, colored those onto that cardstock, and then I have a flat brush that I got wet, and I'm just painting that background, just leaving those rough edges. I'm totally fine with those rough edges and blending all of those colors together. Once I'm happy with that, I'll just set this off on the side to dry for a little while. What's really great is this can have such a variety of colors used in it. It doesn't have to be pink or rainbow. It can be anything. So I wanted to show you quick. This is the pack of cardstock that I use. It comes in a block that's glued on the sides. There's one corner that's loose, which is where I put my bone folder and just kind of peel that off. And I planned on using this some more in the video, so I took out a couple sheets. So now I'm doing the same technique I had before. I'm just scribbling down those colors. This time I'm using the purple, a blue, and a green. And I have quite a variety of Tombow markers, and what I like to do is just kind of scribble them on scratch paper to see what shade it is and what colors I want to use. And then I just kind of grab and go and play and experiment. So those colors are down. I took my flat brush, got that wet, and just painted that background. And I just kind of went over the blue and the green uh, a little bit to make sure that those kind of blended together really nice, and then set that off on the side to dry. And I think this turned out to be one of my favorite backgrounds out of the bunch that I made. So I did do a few more backgrounds off screen that I'll show you here. And these are what I'm going to use for some of the cards in the video today. This I wanted to show you is called Master Layouts 1. This is, I have all the die sets on one sheet just for uh, easy for me, but this is where the magic is. Gina's very famous for her um, 
panels, her matted layouts on her cards. So she created a die so you don't have to do any measuring, no sixteenths of an inch, anything like that. This creates a very thin uh, strip, a very thin mat, just like her cards are. So she's made it very easy for you. I'm taking one of them and I'm going to die cut all of my panels using one of them. I think this was the smallest of the two. I just held those down with purple tape and ran those through my die cut machine. You want to make sure your panels are very good and dry because when you die cut them, that could uh, kind of ruin the edges. So make sure they're really nice and dry before you die cut. On this rainbow panel that I had done, I'm going to stamp one of these sets of hands. This is from the Hands of Love stamp set out of the card kit. I love the shape of these hands. They were beautifully done. And I'm going to pair it with a sentiment from the Let's Celebrate stamp set. This is part of Gina's regular release and not in the card kit. So to start off, to make sure that I'm lining this up straight, I lined my panel up in my black misty. This is a collaboration misty from My Sweet Petunia and Hero Arts. And I used my misty ruler to push up my stamp set. When it pushes against that ruler, it makes it nice and straight. So then I ink that up with some VersaFine black ink. I'm using VersaFine because it's a really thick ink and I really need to get into the grooves of that watercolor cardstock. Um, it's a very textured cardstock and I do stamp this about three times. It also stays wet for quite a while so if you wanted to add some shine to this you could sprinkle on some clear embossing powder and just bring a little bit of shine to your card. Once I clean that stamp off with my tidy towel, I'm going to bring in the sentiment that says thank you and it's off of the Let's Celebrate stamp set. I just really liked the font of this and the skinniness of it and it just seemed to fit really well underneath those hands. But you can use any sentiment whether it's off of the Hands of Love stamp set or anything else in the kit. So I stamped that once in the VersaFine black ink. And that finishes off that card panel. Now while I have my Misty out, I'm going to stamp on my other blended panel that I did. I really wanted to use those natural silhouettes. Now to do this, and I wanted to have it hanging off of the side quite a bit, I am using two of the creative corners. That helps me make sure my cardstock is over enough in the Misty so I can overhang that stamp set. Then since my stamp is pretty new, it kind of moved my paper a little bit. So I'm just going to pop that corner back in there, fit them nicely in the corner of the misty, and I'm holding my paper down with the magnet. And then I just need to remove one of the misty corner just to make sure it's out of the way so my stamp doesn't get uh, st stuck on it or anything. And then I can ink that up with the VersaFine ink and stamp that down. And you can see this has a really nice overhang. I think it's just a, a real nice and natural look. And then giving that a good push to stamp that down. And I do stamp this one multiple times as well because I really wanted a nice crisp black image to really stand out from this background. After I have that stamped a couple times, I'm going to set it off on the side to dry and I'm going to finish off my rainbow card. I apologize I jump around a little bit in this video. It was kind of how my card making process was going. I was just kind of jumping from one thing to another. So I'm going to finish off my Hands of Love card by using some of the new embellishments that Gina has released. If you haven't seen these yet, definitely check them out. This is the Rainbow Hearts pack. She also has a pack of hearts that are black and white, and they're just the cutest little things that you can use on your cards, whether it's the dot of an eye or, you know, the end of your exclamation point, just maybe around your image or your sentiment. I went through and I ended up using the white only because it stood out so well compared to my background. I really wanted to bring in a color, but it just seemed to have gotten lost in with my background. So the white stood out really nice against uh, my stamped hands and that colorful background. To attach the heart, I'm just going to use a little dot of Gina's Connect glue and that'll hold it on there really well. Now you'll notice here that I also have a black border around my blended panel and that is uh, the die cut I used from the Master Layouts 1 die set. So you'll see that's what it does. There's the first panel is a smaller one, the second one is that little thin strip of a panel and then added to a white card base. 
Here is the second card. I did the same thing with the black matted panel. And the background there, uh, an afterthought was I flicked on some perfect pearls that I had mixed with water, and that just added a little bit of shimmer to the background. Now for my sentiment, I'm using a new stamp set out of the June release, and it's called Free to Flourish. I just really loved the font of this, the skinniness, and what I had done off screen was I heat embossed it in white onto black cardstock, trimmed it to a thin strip, added it to a piece of white cardstock, and trimmed that down. So that gives me that kind of label look, and then attached that with white foam squares. Now what I'm showing you here, and this is probably the hardest part of the entire video, was choosing which embellishment to use on my background. Gina released some more embellishments. We have uh, some clear quartz sequence mix. There's a variety of rhinestones in here. So like I said, definitely check out this release. It is totally been worth the wait because there's so many amazing products in this. Not just the card kit, but the regular release itself. So I went with this type of confetti mix. I think she has it listed as sequence. And it just, there's no hole in the middle. So I just put those around my sentiment. I like to go in odd numbers, so three on top, two on the bottom, and then use the connect glue to attach those, kind of bringing your eyes into the sentiment. And after that, it finishes off my card. And I do have a couple other cards I finished off screen that I wanted to show you really quick. The first one is with the background that I had done with the, the comfort block. I just stamped that silhouette image onto the background with some black ink. This is the other card I created where I had created that background by blending with a paintbrush. And that is heat embossing this image from the Best Flowers stamp set out of the card kit. I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll take a look at the new release. All of the supplies will be listed down below in my video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.